Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. In this video, we are going to do the MPLS BGP free code configuration. So we already looked at the explanation in our part one. On this part one, we will be looking at the configuration. Now the configuration, if you look at the topology, in the first part, we are going to configure this SP code, that is my service provider code. So once we configure the SP code, then we will go ahead and configure our customers, that is VRFC1 and VRFC2. Then we will look at how to how do they exchange the routes between over the IBGP and communicate from R5 to R8 and R6 to R7. And at the end of this series, we will be looking at the how to leak the routes in order to have a inter communication with the different VRFs and also setting up the route targets when we are doing the route clicking on them. So let's look into the first part that is the configuration of our SP code. And if you look at my topology, I have not configured anything. So I will start up from the scratch. All the configuration will be from the scratch. So we'll just bring up the notepad. All right, so let's start with the R1. T0/0 IP address will be 100.1.1.255.0 and no set and interface loopback 0 and IP address will be 1.1.1.255.0 and no set exit and I'm saying that router EIGRP 100 no auto summary and network will be 100.1.1.0 and network 1.1.0 and exit that's the R1 configuration. So I will do the copy paste on my R1. Now let's do the R2 similarly. Do a copy paste and E0 slash 0 is located over here. So it's 100.1.1.2. And E0 slash 1. So I will do a copy paste of this one. And E0 slash 1 is 100.2.2.2. And the loopback is 2.2.2. And again, EIGRP 100.1.1.1. So I will go ahead and say that 0.0.0, .0 because this is the core router within my SP. So I'll just do a copy paste. Now go to R2. With the configuration. Let's move forward to R3. It will be a similar configuration. So E0 slash 0 will be 100.2.2.2.2.3. So this one will be E0 slash 0. And E0 slash 1 will be 100.3.3.3. And the loop pack will be 3.3.3. .3. And EIGRP 100, it's the same configuration of the EIGRP. And going to the R3. And if I go to R2, I should have the name relationship up and running. That's good. And R3, I am also having the name relationship up and running. Let's do the R4. So R4 is similar to R1. So I will just do a copy paste of R1. Now in R1, E0 slash 0 is 100.3.3.4. And the loopback is 4.4.4. .4 .4. And the IGRP 100, this one is 3.3 and this one is 4.4.3 go to R4 All right. so once my interface is up I should form my new relationship PIGRP which I got and now at this point if I go to R1 if I say that do show if you route PIGRP I should see the routes with R2, R3 and R4 and at this point I should have the reachability looping 4.4.4 with source feedback 0 I am able to pick right so at this point I do have a full communication between my router 1, 2, 3 and 4 now the next thing is that what I want to configure is that I want to configure the MPLS now first part is done bootstrap configuration now, second part is that I will enable the MPLS. Now, I will form the MPLS NAPE relationship 
using the loop backs. I will form the MPLS NAPE relationship using the loop backs. If you remember that I do have the EIGRP NAPE relationship, so I am able to reach the loop back. So that's the reason I am forming the MPLS NAPE relationship using the loop backs. So let's go ahead and enable the MPLS now. So how to enable that one MPLS? On R1, I am saying that MPLS LDP router ID use the loopback zero. So this is the command which says that to MPLS to use the loopback zero as its router ID. Next interface zero slash zero MPLS IP. So if you want to enable an MPLS on an interface, this is the only command. Right. Since we are only having one interface towards the core, SP core, so that's the reason I am only enabling MPLS on the E0 slash 0. Let's do a copy paste on here now. Next thing will be on R2. Do the same thing, but uh, I do have one more interface that is E0 slash 1. So I will just do a copy paste. And I will say that E0 slash 1. Same copy paste. And if I go to R2, you see that I got an LDP name relationship is up and running. Now let's go to the R3. R3 is also the same E0 slash 0 and 0 slash 1. So the same configuration for R3. Let's and for R4 is the same configuration as R1. Let's do a copy paste down here now. Now MPLS is running on my course. So if I go ahead and say that do show MPLS at the team neighbors. And you should see that my R1 is having a relationship with R2. And if I go to R2, do show MPLS and between neighbors. It should have two neighbors. One is R1 and one is R3. All right. So that means my R1, uh, my MPL is running on the service core. So to check and confirm whether the labels have been assigned, do show MPLS forwarding table. And you should see that I do have a table. Now, if I want to reach R4, that is 4.4.4, .4 I do have a label here. So let me check. Do trace route 4.4.4 .4 with source loopback 0. And you see that I am my MPLS label have been assigned. So that means at this point of time, my MPLS is running over here. Okay, MPL is running and my bootstrap configuration is been done. I do have end to end connectivity between my service provider core. And the next thing is that I need to configure an IBGP NAPE relationship between my R1 and R2. Let's go ahead and configure that. So open my notepad now. Let's configure the MPBGP. All right. So I will say that router BGP 100 and I will go to address family IPv4 and I will say that neighbor 4.4.4 remote AS has 100 and neighbor 4.4.4 update source will be back 0 and that should be good exit but one more address family you have to enable that is address family and b4 and you have to say that neighbor 4.4.4 .4 and activate i'll come to this later on but you finish up the configuration and i will come to this one so I will just do a copy paste and i will go to my r1 and i will do a copy paste no errors and i will do the same thing for r4 and I will say that this one I will change it to 1.1.1. 1.1.1. 1 .1 .1. Right. 1 .1 .1. And I And this one will also be 1.1.1. 1 .1 .1. Let's do a copy paste on R4. My BGP should be up. So now I have enabled two things, two address families in my when I am configuring this one. So one was address family normal address family ipv4 another thing was vpn v4 so this is a table where uh, my vrf routes will be stored so basically whenever i am getting the prefixes from my clients 
I am taking this as a BGP. Right? So these, these are the BGP normal routes, 32 bit routes. And I'm taking these routes and then I'm just transferring to the BP and V4 routes, V4 table. In this table, I have both the customer's routing table available here, assigned with RT values. So for example, I'm running the RT value of 100 is to 1 over here. So I will get the route stored over here, like 100 is to 1. I do have a route known as 10.5.5.5. And similarly, the same thing happens if I have another route coming from 200 is to 1, that is the customer 2, and I will have the 200 is to 1, and the customer will be 10.6.6.6 .6 .6 routes. So now these routes are 96 bits routes. So these are normal 32 bits routes, and these are 96 bits routes. So between these, my provider's edge, so this is known as the provider's edge and this is known as the customer edge. So between customer edge and provider's edge, I am running only a normal BGP, all right? So, but here I am running the MP BGP. So in MP BGP, you do have a address table of BP and before where you will store all the routes over here. So while doing the configuration in the future, you will see that all the routes have been uh, stored in this BP and before table. But now my BGP free core, is ready because I have established an IBGP name relationship between R1 and R4 without configuring BGP on these routers. So let me go ahead and check verify this one before I finish up. With this video you see that my BGP is up and running. So BGP name relationship is up and running. So if I say that do show IP BGP summary, I do have the name relationship up and running and no prefixes have been shared. So in this video, we have configured the BGP free code and PLS BGP free code. I hope you, you have enjoyed this video. See you in the next one.